You are holy, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Because you are, you have declared us to be. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. What a great and a mighty God we serve. Lord, nothing is impossible with you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Nothing is impossible. In fact, all things are possible if we believe. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap this morning. Praise God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you, Tim. Great job as always. Thank you, uh, Suzanne, Peter, and Tammy. Can I, can I say something wrong? Sure. Sure. Um, so, a, a couple things actually. Um, so, back when we had Easter Day's House of Prayer, I remember receiving a vision of Muslims coming into this church to receive healing. They weren't looking for Jesus, but they, they had been told somehow that this was a house of healing. And then today, while in worship, I was seeing people in their hospital beds coming in here Praise because they had no other hope. They were, they were being released to die. And they were coming in here because they knew if they could just get in the doors, they could heal. Thank you, Jesus. And I really believe, and, and so it, I believe it's from God. I, I've got to find a way to help Pastor Fund to get a, a wheelchair ramp up to this building because I believe people need to be wheeled in here in the future. I believe we're coming to a move of God where people will see this as a house of healing and that they'll just, they've got no other hope but to come here. Yes. Praise the Lord. So, okay. I know this is out of order. And I no, that, that's, hey, it's not can out of order. Can I speak this thing out of Jody? I, I spoke it out of my hope. Yes. I yes. got paid for this. Yeah. And so I, I'm sorry no. to do this. I should have Toby, get up and put your arms around me. Jody, put, put your, your hand on the wound. In Jesus' name, Thank we command you. Lord. you. Praise I speak God. to you abnormality. In Jesus' name, the blood of Jesus be against you. You Thank are here illegally. You must go. In Thank Jesus you, name. Jesus. I, I bind you in Jesus' name. Praise God. And I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I command you to go to dry places and never return. Thank in Jesus you, Lord. Name. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. We agree in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Peter. Praise the Lord. So, sorry, it's just the whole the Lord the Lord spoke to me up in worship because what are you gonna do about that? I'm like, well, I better do something about it. Amen. Amen. Appreciate it. Praise God. So sorry for the sorry for the um, disturbance. Never out of order to believe God for healing or deliverance or anything else. Praise God. So thanks, Peter. Praise the Lord. And thank you, John, for mowing again. I was down here at seven. 15 or something yesterday. Praise the Lord. John's been here. I assumed it was John. Praise God. But anyway, thank you very much, John. I appreciate it. We've had a, we had a busy week this week with the baby, and we were babysitting four grandkids between the ages of uh, eight and one. And I had to do most of it. I'll just be honest with you. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. Anyway, God is good. Some of you may have been here early when, uh, you know, I left home early this morning before Sally. I get to church and she's already here, which is not uncommon for Sally because, well, one of the reasons I don't ride with her that much is because, well, I'll just tell you, I'll, I'll just give you one example. We were riding, we were going somewhere, I don't remember where we were going now, but she was driving too fast, and she's usually right on somebody's bumper. This is always irritates me. I have to just grip my teeth and let it go. And uh, she's going over the speed limit, and a cop pulls right up beside her and says, pull over. And she said, no, it's a cardigan, and just took off. <laughs> just doesn't get law and order at all, praise the Lord, so... If you see her driving separate from me, then you understand why. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Speaking of driving, I had a weird night. Uh, I don't know what happened. I just got kind of confused and weird thinking. I thought, it was a strange thing. I, I, I better take the bus. So I took a bus, and, and that might not seem like a big deal to you guys, but that was the first time I'd ever driven a bus. <laughs> Took, the bu took a yeah. bus, praise the Lord. Yeah, well, it's tax time. I was talking to a guy the other day, and he told me. He said, I, Nathan, I'm a happy man. 
And I said, well, why is that? And he said, uh, well, he said, the IRS has been after me for 20 years. They're driving me nuts. He said, they're, they're trying to get money out of me, and they're worrying me with all these threats. But this morning, I got a letter from them, and it says everything's fine. Well, I said, it's the final notice. <laughs> Amen. Well, thank God, he said, I won't have to be hearing from them again. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. All right. Tax time. It's always fun. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good. Glory to God. Amen. Well, I was thinking, I, I really uh, appreciate you guys uh, sharing what you shared this morning because it just validates what the Lord had, had spoken to me. And so I want to share that with you this morning. And let's, let's just, let's be who God says we are. Amen. And if we are who God says we are, we'll do what God says we can do. Amen. If we do what God says we can do, we're going to be more than conquerors. And the world is going to be looking to us for the answers that only we have in Christ. Amen. So I'd like to begin, Peter, uh, appropriately with 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. Oh, sorry. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us into his glory by Christ Jesus, after they have suffered a while. Now, he's not talking about God doing this. He's talking about just like what Tammy, or what uh, 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 yeah, Jody's talking about. You have to work through this stuff. And yeah. it's, so it's, it's, it's like suffering. Yeah. But you have to press through. You have to resist steadfast. In the faith. You're not just resisting to be stubborn. You're resisting in the faith. The way you resist in the faith is by going by what God says and not by what the doctor says or the lawyer or the whatever. Okay, so God of all grace who hath called us into his glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. Praise the Lord. All that Tim was talking about too. This is where peace comes from. This where rest comes from is trust. It's in confidence in God. Amen? Yes. All right, Colossians chapter 2 now, verse 15. Colossians 2 and 15. Praise the Lord. Yes. Having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing yes. over them in yes. it. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. So you only defeat the devil when you've got a foundation of God's word and you act on it. Yes. You can know it. But if you don't act on it, if you don't declare it, it's yep. absolutely doing you no good. Amen. The principalities and powers that Paul is talking about are satanic beings. Amen. Demonic beings that are trying to influence our lives. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 6. Praise God. 1 Corinthians 2 and 6. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. We just heard that we are perfect if we... Resist the enemy, right? Yet not the wisdom of this world. So we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. Now listen to this. Here's Moffat's translation of that. He says, Only it is not the wisdom of this world or of the dethroned powers who rule this world. So Satan and all of his demon forces have been dethroned. Amen. The word dethrone means to remove from a throne or place of power or preeminence. Satan and all of his demons have been removed from their place of power. Yes. Praise the Lord. The reason that so many Christians have problems with the devil is because they're always trying to defeat the devil in their own strength. Oh, yes. Praise the Lord. They don't have the wisdom that Paul's talking about here. Right. Amen. When we have the wisdom of God... You know, Satan and his demons are already defeated. If you have the wisdom of God, you know you're already a conqueror. He has already been defeated. Praise the Lord. So the war was declared, amen, a long time ago. And it was declared that Jesus won the victory. Amen. So Jesus didn't say go into all the world and dethrone the devil. He said go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. 
Amen. What's the gospel? It's the good news that Jesus has dethroned the devil and set mankind free from spiritual death. That's the good news. Amen. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14. You say, well, then why am I still having these problems? Look, the way you got saved is the same way you get healed. The same way you get delayed. You believe that what God said, in spite of how you might be behaving or how you think or how you feel, it's, that's irrelevant. It's what God said and then you acting on what God said that creates it. So it's the same for salvation. It's the same for healing. It's the same for deliverance. It's the same for relationships. It all works the same way. But you have to suffer. Yes. Now, now, I'm not saying suffer just for the sake of suffering. I'm saying you have to fight yes. the good fight. Yes. That's what faith is. That's the suffering. It isn't God punishing you. It's you pressing through whatever the junk is that's trying to deny the promise that God has given you. Amen. So for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. That through death... He might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. Praise the Lord. So Satan has no more power, amen, over me, over my life, because Jesus broke the power. Jesus broke the authority and the power of Satan. Yes. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 22. For as in Adam all die. Even so, in Christ shall all be made alive. Yes. So God's plan of rulership for man never ended, never ceased. It never stopped just because Satan or because uh, Adam failed. Right. The plan goes on. Amen. Yes. It didn't stop. Jesus came to recapture what has been lost. Yes. Luke chapter 19, verse 10. So... For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save yes. that which was lost. Yes. Well, not only was mankind lost to sin, his dominion over earth was also lost. Yes. Yes. He had dominion. He had charge. He had control. He had authority. Right? Mm -hmm. But he lost it. He lost it because of sin. Yes. And he also lost his dominion in the process. So Jesus came to recapture both sin what we had lost because of sin and because of our dominion. Yes. It was as though Satan was saying, uh, look, look at Luke chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. You know, this is Jesus in the wilderness. The devil said unto him, All this power will I give to thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. Now, he's legitimate. Because he got it from Adam. Right. So he's just saying, I've got this authority now because right. he sold out. Right. It's now me that has ch in charge. I'm in the principalities and powers, you know. Yeah. I'm the one that's in charge. So he, the devil said to him, all this power, which he had, authority, dominion, that Adam had. Yeah. Now, it's, now it's Satan. He said, I, I, all this power will I give you. In other words, I'll give it back to you. Glory of them, for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will give it. He's being honest. He's got this authority, this power. If you will worship me, I'll give it back. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Not only was mankind lost, praise the Lord, because of sin, he was lost because of authority. Praise the Lord. So Jesus came to recapture this. And now it's kind of like, here's kind of what he says. The Satan is saying, I know what you came for. And you know what I want. Mm -hmm. Worship me. And I'll give you back the keys of the authority that man lost. Mm -hmm. But if he had done it, uh -huh. he'd have been no better off than Adam had been. Because right. he would have exactly. turned against God and exactly. worshipped Satan. Right. Praise the Lord. So Jesus said, no. No, no. Right. no shortcuts. Mm -mm. And he refused to give in. Right. Praise the Lord. No. The enemy is saying, you know, just get to the right doctor. Mm -hmm. Go to the Mayo Clinic. Go here. Go there. Go there. Just, God can't do this. This is going to take something. I have good insurance. A little extra money. Back it up. Praise the Lord. Satan was defeated by a man. That's right. 
That's right. When we believe the finished work of Jesus, yes. we're grafted into that victory. Yes. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 through 23, Peter. Matthew 16, 21 through 23. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders, the chiefs, priests, and scribes, and be killed, and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. So he, look, you know, uh, Jesus didn't say to Peter, uh, you devil worshiper, yeah. you know, you, you occultist, yeah. you no good <laughs> Baptist, Methodist, I don't know. No, he said, your mind is filled with the things of man. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Remember, the devil is empowered by human agreement. Yeah. We have authority now. We have dominion. We are the rulers. Amen. So the only way for the devil to have any power is if we empower him. And the way we empower him is by agreeing with him. Praise the Lord. That mental posture, that was the gate from which Satan was released to bring destruction. When Adam got on board and Eve got on board with Adam, they opened up hell into this earth. Yes. It gave Satan authority. It gave him dominion. Praise the Lord. To say, you know, to say that I'm only human is to say I'm only satanic. Praise the Lord. We've been born again. We are children of God. We're not children. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. Amen. Humanity without Christ without being centered in Christ, is satanic in nature. Turn on the news if you don't believe me. You listen to them and you think, how can they even say this stuff? Because they're demonic. Yeah. I'm not saying they're all demons or that they're all necessarily possessed, but they are influenced yes. by the demonic. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. When, you, when you've been given the Spirit of God, yes. you lose the right to claim I'm only human. You're not only human anymore. You are just like Jesus, a man filled with the presence of God. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 3. For you are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying, strife, and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians 10, 5. Sounds like one of those dolls my granddaughter's got. <laughs> Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought yes. Yes. to the obedience of Christ. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yes. Right here yes. is the location yes. of the gate of hell. Yes. Praise the Lord. The gate of hell. And you could say the principalities and the powers are in our mind as well. Anytime we agree with the enemy, that empowers the demonic force. Praise the Lord. John chapter 3, verse 12. And we think, well, it's just words. Listen, if you're a king and a priest, whatever comes out of your mouth is set. Amen. Remember, you look at the Old Testament and just like, uh, you know, different ones would come before the king. If Daniel, for example, when he said, you know, anybody who does not bow, he didn't have an issue with Daniel. He was okay with it. But because of the influence that he had, he said, anybody who doesn't bow is going to be killed. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So... Anytime we, anytime we, uh, we open our mouth, this is a king talking. Yes. And the moment he says it, it's a law now. It has to yes. be fulfilled. Yes. Yes. Everything within that kingdom now is 
poised to make come to pass what that king said. Yes. Now, in this case, it happened to be a negative. Because Daniel right. was thrown into the lion's den. Right. So, <laughs> what I'm saying is, what you say is what you get. Yes. You have influence. You have authority. Yes. Angelic beings listen to you. They yes. act based on your word. They, they are sent to fulfill yes. or to accomplish, amen, yes. the demands that people have as heirs of salvation. Right. They're to minister, amen, to the heirs of salvation. To bring to pass the thing that God wants to bring to pass in our life. Yes. But they only respond to the word of God. Right. Yes. They don't listen to anything else. So if I've told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? See, our goal is to agree with heaven all the time. Yes. Yes. To sit in heavenly places and principalities and powers and be the gate of heaven. Yes. Praise the Lord. Whatever we build, God backs it up. Whatever we bind, God binds. Whatever we bind on earth shall have been, is what is the literal translation. Whatever we bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven. Yes. Whatever we loose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven. Yeah. This was the entire focus of Jesus' ministry. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. And it's a great word of authority for us. Yes. That's what he was here doing amen, was enforcing God's domain, God's dominion, God's authority through man because it's the only way God could do it. That's the way he has set it up. Amen. Remember, Jesus took back principalities and powers. He took it back. Whatever we bind has already been bound. Our business is to see what is bound up there and then bind it down here. We know there is no cancer. In heaven. No, no, no. There's no disease. There's no broken relationships. No. Amen. There's no poverty. No. So we have every legal right according yes. to God to bind those things here on earth. Yes. That's what God's going to respond to. Yes. 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 Praise the Lord. Whatever is free up in heaven in that realm and whatever is there to function needs to be released here. Praise the Lord. We are the gate of heaven into this earth. What does the Bible says? Lift up your head, O ye gates, and the King of glory will come in. Praise the Lord. When you identify with who you are and what you are, God shows up. Praise God. Amen. Second uh, Peter chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. We're supposed to be the gate for the free flow of heavenly realities into this planet. It cannot happen without us responding in that way. So Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained life precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. So grace is God's willingness to use His power and His ability on your behalf. Praise the Lord. This grace is multiplied to you through the knowledge yes. of God. Now, grace is free, yeah. Yeah. but it only multiplies to the degree you understand it. Right. it grace is for everybody, but we know that there are literally hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people that are Christians that are not right. receiving the grace of God to the degree they, they should or, or God would like them to. Amen? When you gain the knowledge of what God will do or has already done, yes. it multiplies His grace or His willingness to you. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. When The more you know about what God wants to do, the more His grace yeah. is loosed yes. to flow into your life. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. God already is willing. Amen? Yeah. But you can't believe any further than you have knowledge of. He wants to pour out His grace. But the grace is only influential to the degree that you submit to it. That you are aware of it. That you have knowledge of it. Amen? So when you gain the knowledge of God, it multiplies God's willingness to use that power. Amen? His ability on your behalf. Yes. Praise the Lord. 2 Peter 1 and verse 3.
according as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Let me just read it again. According as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that has called us to glory and virtue. Praise the Lord. So how has God given us all things that pertain to life and godliness? Through the knowledge of Him. You can't believe for something that you don't have knowledge of. Praise the Lord. If you speak the promise, your faith will grow concerning that promise. That's how it's supposed to work. That's how Jesus did it. Amen. Peter said, according as his divine power hath, past tense, given. Yes. This is how God gives it to us through his divine power. Right. Praise the Lord. The good news is that the word of God is his power. Yes. Amen. Romans 1.16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So the gospel of Christ, or the word of God, is the power of God. Praise God. He's sending us his divine promise through his divine word. Amen. In other words, he has given us all things through his promise, hath given, amen, not going to do it. He has already done it. 2 Peter 1 verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. Amen. The word whereby there means by this means or by way of. By way of these precious promises, right? So when you begin to lay hold of God's promises by confession, you know, people say, well, who do you think you are? Think you're God? You know I mean? You're running around spewing these words out about doing this or doing that or the other thing. No, I'm not God. But I'm a partaker of the divine nature. Amen? The divine power of God already has been given to us. God's power is in His Word. Yes. Hebrews 1 and 3 says, He is the upholder, or He is upholding all things by the Word yep. of His power. Yep. So once you've knowledge of the promise, what's been given to you, you've got to act on it. Once you get the promise, you can't just say, well, that's cool. No, you have to act on it. Right. That, and that's what, that's what the Scripture's talking about when He says, show me your faith without works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. He's not talking about works, uh, you know, to gain righteousness. Yeah. He's saying the works that you have to do is to step out in faith on whatever God has said. Right, right. I'll show you my faith, right? Yeah. Do what, what Sarah did. I'll show you my faith. Yeah. I'm not receiving this. Right. Well, you have to. No, I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't have to do anything except what my Father in heaven right. tells me. And he's told me that by his stripes I'm healed. Thank you very much, doctor. I appreciate your years of, uh, uh, you know, laboring and, and gaining your, your degree and, and then practicing, you know, trying to help people. And I'm, I'm grateful for that, but I don't need it. Thank you very much. Go find a sinner and heal them. Praise the Lord. Because by his stripes, I was already healed. Amen. Praise God. Once you've got knowledge, you have to act. If you're not going to act, then the knowledge is absolutely worthless. That's right. That's good. And here's the deal. In life, this is the way, I, what I've learned over the years. If you don't quit, you'll win. I mean, you just have to keep doing it. You just can't quit. You can't give up and just say, I don't think this is going to work. I've been doing this for five years and it's still not working. You just cut your own throat. If you don't quit, you right. will win. Yes. If you don't give up, you will be victorious. Yes. You don't have to out-punch the devil. No. You just got to quit giving in. Yeah. You just got to quit giving up. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Romans chapter 10, verses 6 through 8.
But the righteousness, which is of faith, mm -hmm. speaks on this wise, or speaks this way. Don't say in your heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. So what he's saying is, this isn't, you've got to go beg Jesus to do something for you. Right. Mm -hmm. that, that's a waste of time. Mm -hmm. But the righteousness, which is of faith, speaks on this wise. Say not in your heart who shall ascend into heaven. That is to bring Christ down from above. Don't have to worry about trying to get Jesus to do something. Verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Praise the Lord. Promise in your mouth. Then it's in your heart. you got to say it. you got to declare it. you got to come into agreement for it to get into your spirit. Amen. You speak the word of promise out of your mouth. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Then as you speak it, it's picked up by your inner ear. Amen. And it's fed into your spirit. Yeah. How many of you ever listen? I've talked about this before. I, I don't ever listen to messages that I preach. I can't. It just makes me really uncomfortable to hear my voice. And, you know, it's just even things that I say. And I'm thinking, who is that idiot? And why are you listening to him? <laughs> but I'm just saying this. When you, have you ever listened to yourself on a tape recording? Or something? It doesn't sound like it does. It? No, because you have an inner ear that hears you. Right. It's unique to you. Right. And that sounds normal. Yeah. But then when you hear it on a tape, it's the outer ear that's picking it up. And it doesn't sound like you anymore. And you go, oh, God, who is that? Jeez, stop this, you know. You see what I'm saying? So you, this is why God says, look, get it in your mouth. Say it. Yeah. And it'll resonate with you. It'll, yes. That's me. That's me saying this. That's why when we do our confessions, you do them out loud. Because it, it's like, yeah, that's true. It's got to be true because that's me. I'm talking about me. I'm not just listening to somebody else's recording about this. This is me. That's me. I, I, I connect with that. Amen. So you speak it. Amen. And, and it's picked up by the inner ear. And then it goes into your spirit. Your faith cannot rise any higher than the confession you have of God's word. It's not enough to hear somebody else say it. It's not even enough for you just to read it. What's going to change is when you start declaring it. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. And this is exactly what Jesus did. You know, we've, He is God in the flesh. But He doesn't want us to treat Him that way. In, in our relationship here, uh, trying to get to who and what we are supposed to be. Praise the Lord. He said, here's the simple truth. I just say what God says. Yeah. That's right. I only say what he says. I'm not doing anything except what I've seen him do. That's us. That's what we're supposed to be doing. We just, we just kind of resign ourselves to, well, yeah, that's Jesus. I mean, come on. No, we are identical to him. The moment we got born again. But we don't want to function the way he functioned. We want a handout. Right. Please, I'm, I have a problem. Yeah. No. no. He, he said, I, I, I've done everything I can do. Now yeah. it's up to you. You have to act on this word. You have to believe yeah. that what I've said is true. Yes. And it's just as true for you yes. as it was for me. Yes. But you can't. There isn't some other circuitous route to take no. to make this happen. Right. There's just one way. Right. He's the door. Praise the Lord. But while we look not at the things which are seen, the toenail, the uterus, the lungs, the knees, the back, the hips, the picket, we got it, right? But at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. That's temporary. That's, te that, that's temporary, right? Praise the Lord. Whatever it is, it's temporary. But the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary. But the things which are not seen are settled. They're eternal. They're not going to change. They can't change because God has established them. Praise the Lord. So God's method is to take an eternal force, which is faith, and change the things that are seen, the temporary things. Are you, you want to see yep. temporary things change? Yep. Faith. Yep. Yep. That's what does it. it does. Praise the Lord. 
temporal means subject to change. Yes. Whatever the temporary thing is, it's subject to change. It, it's going to change. Yep. Amen. Which means if you can see it, yes. if you can feel it, if you can touch it, if you can taste it, then you can take your faith and the word of God and change it. If it's temporary, it has to change. It has to be subject to you. God's, here's the good news. The evil is temporary. All evil is temporary. There is no permanent evil. Praise the Lord. Jesus has dethroned the evil one. The principalities, the powers have been defeated. Amen. Jesus has dethroned him. Yes. Principalities and powers. They're, they're, they're beaten. Amen. 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 Sickness is subject to change. Yes. Poverty is subject yes. to change. Yes. Broken relationships. They're subject to change. They're temporary situations and circumstances. They may seem permanent to us, but they're temporary. Yes. Praise God. True. Hebrews 11 verse 1. By faith. Faith is the substance, right? Yes. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, right? Yeah. Word became flesh. Word was with God. Word was God. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Yes. So just with me for a moment here. Words are expressions of thoughts and desires, right? I mean, that's not a real deep thing, but you can't do anything without thinking it first. Right. So words, amen, have power. God's word is the express image of his substance or his purpose. Let me say it again. God's word is the express image of his substance or person. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Yes. Yes. Praise God. When you have a promise of God, that's God's expressed image of His faith. Yes. In the hey, let there be light. That's the express image of God's faith, and light is. Yes. Amen. It's His own personality. He has expressed it. Yes. So in that promise is supernatural power, divine energy to cause manifestation. Jesus understood that, and that's where he worked from. Yes. He wasn't operating as God. He was operating exactly like you and I can, amen, based on what God had said. Regardless of what the circumstances might have been. That divine energy or, or faith in action is God's personality in manifestation through you. God can't do anything without you down here because he's bound himself to you and to me. God is a God of faith. Everything about God is about faith. When we act in faith, it's divine energy. It's the divine energy of God. That's what causes us to act that way. Yeah. You want to know the difference between you and the world? Talk to them about this for a little bit. Yep. Yeah. They'll run like their hair is on fire. They will. They don't, they don't get it. They don't. Unless the Holy Spirit's dealing with them, this makes absolutely no sense to them whatsoever. You're right. You're right. But it's the divine energy of God at work in you manifesting yep. this reality and this truth. Right. Praise the Lord. God is not selfish. He's not stingy. He, when he says, I will not share my glory with another, he's talking about anybody outside the family. We are one with him. Yes. We are the same as God in the flesh, yes. as Jesus was. Mm -hmm. We are the hope of glory. So don't yes. tell me he's not about wanting us to operate in the glory. Right. It's just that he's not going to share his glory with somebody that's yeah. outside the family. Right. Somebody is not in faith. Right. Praise the Lord. And that's what it means to be partakers of God's divine nature. Praise the Lord. We have it even if we don't realize it. But it only manifests is when we step out in faith and yes. act on it yes. as though we believed it. Yes. Which is what Jesus did and that's the only thing that separated him from everyone else. Right. Yes. Right. And he tells us over and over, you have this same treasure yes. in earthen vessels. You've got the same ability, yeah. the same potential. Yeah. 
Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. Wrapping up here. We've only got a couple more scriptures here. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 15. He says, Who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us, and they please not God and are contrary to all men. Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. Thank you, Peter. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? Sure. Chapter 3 and verse 10. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Uh -huh. Verses 16 and 17. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom and teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. See, I'd rather act like God than act like the devil. Praise the Lord. If I'm acting like God by saying what God said about me, if that's what they want to define as acting like God, then those people who are saying what the devil said are acting like the devil. Yeah. Yes. Amen? Oh, I don't know. I got it. I mean, you know, the doctor told me, and yeah. Mama had it, and Grandpa had it. And, you know, that's what we... we that's it's right. natural. That's normal kind of thinking, praise the Lord. But that's acting like the devil. That's yes. talking like the devil. Yes. And what do you get when you yield yourself to Him? You get what He's got. Yes. Amen. God's not in the business of killing people and, no. and giving them cancers and diseases no. and poverty. and that. God's not about that at all. No, no. But our own mouth condemns us. Yes. When we side up with the devil and start saying what he's saying, we're giving him dominion. Yes. We're giving him authority in our life. Yes. You're not possessed, but you're being manipulated sure. and, and oppressed by an enemy who knows if I can get into their head and get them sure. to thinking sure. crosswise to this word, I've got them. I've got authority over him. I've got dominion over him again, although he has absolutely no authority over you and no dominion because all of those powers and principalities have been taken yes. from him. And you've been placed in their position yes. of authority and dominion. Yes. Praise the Lord. Don't quote the devil. He's a liar. Yes. Everything that comes out of his mouth is a lie when he comes and tells you, hey, you know, here it comes. You got it. Shut up, you liar. Yes. Praise God. Quote God. Amen. He cannot lie. Amen. He can't lie. He Last scripture, 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 16 through 18. 2 Peter 3, 16 through 18. This is the discipline. We've talked about it over and over. It isn't beat yourself to death because you screwed up here or you failed or you were weak in this area. No. It's stay faithful to what God has said in spite of anything else. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of, of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to Him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Grow in the knowledge of God's promises for you. That's how you're going to be victorious. That's how you overcome the devil. That's how people are going to be drawn to Him. That's letting your light shine. Praise God. And it influences the darkness around you. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap again. Amen, amen. God bless you. Look, yeah. these testimonies, they're, they're important to us as individuals for sure. But they're even more important for the influence they have yes. on others yes. who do not know the Lord. Right. Our responsibility is to stand fast amen. in the promises of God yeah. and watch His divine nature 
to be manifested. Yes. Makes God real to people who otherwise don't believe in God. Right. Amen. Right. It, it, right. it makes him real. And it yes. makes him more real to us so that we can believe for an yep. even greater thing the next yep. time. Amen. Because yep. there's all kinds of th things in our life yes. that we have to yes. deal with. And there's only one way to be successful. And that's say, whatever you said, God, that's the final yes. word. It's the last word. Yep. His word. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless all of you. Appreciate you being here. Go in the power of his might. This is your, this is your authority. This is your dominion. You have a right to declare yes. and shut the devil up. Yes. Amen. Praise God. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Just remember, be confessing for healing manifestation in all of these situations and circumstances. That God's going to show himself mighty through us. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week.